One of the biggest mysteries for the upcoming Mass Effect game is, how does Shepard survive the ending of Mass Effect 3? But the biggest mystery of all? Will Bioware canonize only one of the three main endings to properly tell the story in the next Mass Effect? In my opinion, I don't think they will. And I'll explain why in a bit. With the new trailer teasing a return of the beloved Commander Shepard, there are a ton of questions that Shep's return brings up. The main issue isn't whether or not it's possible for Shepard to return. That's a debate for a different day. The main issue is that there are three theoretical scenarios with what happened to Shepard at the end of Mass Effect 3. This begs the question, will Bioware commit to canonizing one of the three? Or will they develop a way to include all of them in the next Mass Effect story? Grab your favorite emergency induction port drink, and let's dive into it. In order to figure out if Bioware will decide to canonize one ending specifically, let's use the hints from the trailer of the Dead Reapers in the background and the N7 armor encased in ice as our first clues. First up, let's go over each main ending. I'm going to ignore the Refuse ending since it results in everyone dying and the Reapers winning, which obviously won't be relevant for the next game, but is an interesting DLC addition regardless. In the Control ending, Shepard grabs hold of an electrical device which ultimately causes Shep to partially disintegrate and become an AI overlord over the Reapers. Interestingly, Shep kind of disappears instead of entirely disintegrating. We don't really know where Shepard's body goes, but assuming Shep gets uploaded, it can kind of be assumed that Shep's body and armor are gone. Add to that that Shep controls the Reapers, but in the trailer there are dead Reapers, it's not looking great for a potential canon ending. In the Synthesis ending, Shepard's energy has to join with the Crucible via the beam in order for Shep's essence to influence the hybrid organic synthetic species of the galaxy. Again, it seems as though Shep's body and armor gets fully disintegrated, but we don't actually see this happen on screen. Also, can I just say, the final song, An End Once and For All, breaks my heart every single time. Also, the Reapers and the hybrid species left after the war are supposed to fully understand one another. So why is Liara walking on a dead Reaper? This was the first ending that I personally chose, and after watching the trailer, I was needless to say, very confused. No green-skinned Liara, Shep's armor encased in ice? Bioware, in my ending, Shepard fully disintegrated. What? in Vermeer's name is going on. Moving on to the destroy ending. It appears that Shep dies in the initial explosions of the Crucible, but if enough total military strength is achieved, you can see the so-called best ending. A final shot of Shep's body and armor, still somewhat intact, and a single breath, indicating that Shep is alive. This is the one ending where it clearly shows Shepard's body and armor surviving the final critical choice that Shep had to make. Anyway, you know where I'm going here. The Destroy ending seems to be the most likely ending that Bioware would consider canonizing, since it's the only one where Shepard appears to be kind of alive. Add in the fact that the Reapers seem to be destroyed in the trailer, the N7 armor encased in ice, it does seem the most likely ending. However, Bioware has also teased that the Geth may play a prominent part in the next title, in both the poster and the mysterious audio recording. By the goddess, what is happening? Here's what I think. Bioware is not going to canonize any of the three endings because they are intentionally teasing contradicting hints about the next game. Add to that that if they do canonize only one ending, it will make players feel forced into choosing that specific ending every time they finish Mass Effect 3. Would they basically trivialize the most important decision Shepard makes in the entire trilogy? I'm leaning towards no, and director Mike Gamble? agrees with me. So, we now have multiple discrepancies teased by Bioware in the past two years. After the backlash of the Mass Effect 3 endings on release, and the negative feedback of Andromeda's lack of solid storytelling, I'm betting that they aren't going to go forward with trivializing the ending of their previous trilogy by canonizing only one. I mean, they're basically trying to 180 degree heel turn after committing to killing off one of their most iconic sci-fi characters in gaming history. Needless to say, with the implication of a new trilogy on the horizon, 
They need to get this right. Add in the fact that the entire franchise is based on player choice and how that carries forward through all the games, I sincerely doubt they are going to force players into choosing the destroy ending, the biggest decision the player makes in the entire trilogy. How are they going to explain away multiple discrepancies, like why Liara's skin isn't green if you chose the synthesis ending, or why the Reapers appear destroyed when Shepard could be controlling them as the AI overlord if you chose the control ending? Who knows? That's a debate for a different day. If you're a new Mass Effect fan and did not know the controversy surrounding the Mass Effect 3 endings on release, or if you are a Mass Effect veteran and just want a quick refresher, stay tuned as I'll be covering that pretty soon. Until then, I'm Atharia, and this is my favorite franchise on the Citadel. Logging you out, Shepard. <laughs>